Nehemiah chapter 5. Another problem comes up. Problems come up. This is the world. This is life. And there was a great cry of the people and of their wives against their brethren the Jews. Now chapter 4 we've had against the Arabians. We had uh, against the Imbalat. We have you know, against the enemies of the Jewish people. Now, the Jewish people are coming up, and they got a a uh, threat or a case against the Jewish people. For there were that said, we are sons, our daughters, are many. Therefore, we take up corn for them, that we may eat and live. You need corn to live, you need food, and corn is not the corn we think of in America, we, wheat, barley, we would make bread, make all kinds of things with the flour of it. So we need, we need corn, we need wheat to live. Some also, there be that said, we have mortgaged, the only place in the Bible that word shows up, we have mortgaged our land. The Bible word, the vineyards and houses that we might buy corn. So we had to go get a loan. We had to go get a mortgage of our property for corn, for food. So many of us. Because of the dirt. Now, dirt is one of them words that you take off the R and you got death. And then you take off the D and you got earth. It's death in the earth. The earth is not producing food as it should. So what happens, you got something that's worse than a famine. And it has come to the conclusion for the children of Israel. Do I eat or starve or do I go to the bank and say, I got here's my property, I got to sell it. And I don't want to sell it because it belongs to me. And so, what will you give me for my property? There were also that said, we have borrowed money from the king's tribute, a tax. So we have mortgage, we have put up collateral. We need to pay it back to get back. We have gone to the king and out of the tax money, out of the government, we have borrowed money we're in debt because we wanted to eat we were starving and that upon our lands and vineyards again collateral don't be so quick to say oh it's not what I would do you don't know what you do yet now our flesh is as the flesh of our brethren. We're full. We're satisfied. Our children as their children. The, the, our children, the Hebrews, as the heathen children. We're, we're full. And lo, we bring into bondage our sons, our daughters, to be servants. Now back in these days, there was no bankruptcy. There was no, okay, just write off. When the tax collector would come or the mortgage people come, you give us your children and we're going to put them to work. And there was a case like this with, with Elijah. The woman who was married to one of the sons of the prophets, he died, she became a widow, she got two sons. She's like, the creditor is coming and my two sons. And they would make the children work to pay off. There would be a set amount that they would make and that would be put to paying the debt. And some of our daughters are, bought, are brought into bondage already. Is there any our power to redeem, to buy back them? We have no money. We can't buy them back. And they've already gone to the bondage and they're about to go into bondage. We're broke. But we're full and we're broke that is what you call a depression that america went through that england has gone through 
There is food, but there's no money. We have no power to redeem them for other men, other men have our lands and vineyards. And I, Nehemiah, was, was very angry when I heard their cry and these words. And I consulted with myself. What's that? He talked to himself. Talking to yourself is in the Bible. Nehemiah does it. Others have done it. Sat back and say, well, you know, this is this is a weird situation we got in. It's an anger. Yeah, we do. There are people that they got mortgage, they got loans, they, they had to eat, now they can't yet can't pay it back. They come to me. What do I do? Consulted with himself. And I rebuke the nobles, the ones who are in charge, and the rulers, the head of the, go the government, the country, and said unto them, Ye exact force, usury, interest to use money. Everyone his brother, Jewish, Hebrew, and I set a great assembly against them. Oh, protest, Nehemiah. Nehemiah got the people together and said, okay, let's, let's go battle it out. Let's go have a little talk with them. Everybody who owes money and can't redeem, get behind me. Let's go. And what we're looking at right here for Hebrews only, in the law of Moses, by God, is you were not to exact and you were not to charge Jewish people usury and that's a use of my money we call it interest today and the only interest is at the bank to make more now the law prescribed a Hebrew he could charge usury to a a heathen but he cannot charge usury to a fellow brethren and they're violating the law and the Jews are suffering and I said unto them the rulers we, after our ability, have redeemed our brethren the Jews, paid back, which were sold unto the heathen. So there are Jewish people who were sold to others, non-Hebrews. We bought them back. We paid for them out of the Hebrew, out of the heathen. And will ye even sell your brethren? He's called, you're worse than, you're worse than uh, a heathen. You're worse than a Gentile. You've done the same thing the Gentiles have done to your own brethren. Now remember, heathen Gentiles were stinky dogs of unclean nature to a Jewish person. And what Nehemiah said to him is, you are just like those dogs. That's an insult. And in our English language today, we have a greater insult, and I won't call it what it is, but a female dog. But did you just see that came out in Nehemiah chapter 5? That expression, female dog, as an insult, as, hey, listen, you guys are just like the dogs. Wow. Jesus does it to one of the women in the gospel. Crackly calls her a, a female dog. It's an insult for a Jewish person to, to be called a Gentile. You are using that profanity that we have today for the name of the female dog. And it comes from our the Bible. As much, and you don't do it, it's wrong to call a woman that. Nehemiah, you don't tell your, your, your Hebrew, your Jewish brethren, you are worse than a dog. You don't do that. But he did. Why? Because that's what the heathen were doing. You're doing what the heathen are doing. He had not called them to remember it. You're sinning against the law. Or shall they be sold unto us? 
Then they held their peace and found nothing to answer. They can't answer. They're guilty. There's no false accusation here by Nehemiah. There's no drum up charges. It's true. It's right. Also, I said, Nehemiah, it is not good that ye do or ye not to walk in the fear of our God because of the reproach of the heathen, our enemies. You don't fear God because the law says, <coughs> don't do it. And you're doing it. And you're giving the heathen opportunity to rank on us, to mock us, because what better are you? You're doing it to your own kind. Don't come to me preaching, oh, we charge you dream, we got the interest system of the banking system and how cruel you are. You do it to your own people. And by now, set forth, it would be maybe a knowledge that in the law of God, of Moses, that the Hebrew people were not to charge usury, but they were allowed to charge the heathen. And here, they're violating the law. Somebody's got to know it. The unsaved world knows when a Christian has sinned because they know what the sins are. Though they, you know, they don't care to do it in their life, they look at you're supposed to be on the up and up standard. I likewise and my brethren and my servants might exact of them money and corn. I pray you let us leave off this usury. And that's Exodus 25, 25. Leviticus 25, 35. Exodus 25, excuse me, Exodus 22, 25, and Leviticus 25, 35. Now notice what Nehemiah said and notice what he didn't say. Take off the interest rate. That's what he said. 3.58, whatever it is, 7.8, take it off. But he did not say relieve the debt. They still have a debt they owe you. Just take off that stupid interest rate. Don't charge them to use the money. To the Hebrew. Now you charge a Babylonian money. All right, you get the APR or the interest rate from the, from the Babylonian, the Syrian, the Egyptian, or whoever. But off our brethren, if you're a Hebrew to the brethren, take off that interest rate. But they still owe you the money. Just not the interest. And a lot of times is what interest what will kill you. So there's still you have the debt. Restore, I pray you to them, even this day, their land. The law said you had no right to do it. And then the, the, the time of, of jubilee and liberty. But restore their lands and vineyards and their olive yards and their houses. How are they going to make money if you if you got what? They can't sell olives if you got it. Where are they going to live? And also the hundredth part of the money. That is 16. Now that's 1% interest. 1% interest of their money. And of the corn, wine, and oil that ye exact of them. What you collected from the interest, you give it back and you pay it back. The interest. You realize that if you were to put a standard like that today, tell the banks, and we're not Hebrew, but you give back what they paid in interest, those loans and those mortgages would be probably paid off by now. And the banks are not helping. I don't want to get into a banking thing tonight, but when they charge you 22.5% interest because to take out your money that you have given them and they give you back a nickel. I swear, I get a penny interest every month. whoop be do The banking system, I'm just going to say, is a fraud. But that's not our lesson today. We're talking about the Hebrews. Let them have it back. Let them make a living and get the interest back. Then said they, 
We will restore them. We will require nothing of them. So we will do as thou sayest. All right, we agree. Sorry. Give them the lands, we're giving the money, we're giving the interest. So then I called the priests. Those are the ones up to God for the nation of Israel. And took an oath of them, the priests and the people. He's got the priests as witnesses. What greater man are you going to get in the nation of Israel to be closer to God than a priest? This would be what we would call today a notary public. But this would be more authority. Under the hand of God, <laughs> Nehemiah is saying, with the priest right here. Under the hand of God. And took an oath of them that they should do according to this purpose. Promise. Me, promise. And I also, also I shook my lap. I'll be sitting down. And said, so God shake out every man from his house, from his labor, that performeth not this promise, even be shaken out and empty. He said, he's shaking everything out of his lap. He said, you be like that in the eyes of God. May God do you that if you do not do the oath that you said. What's the oath? I'm not going to charge the Hebrews. And they turn around. And all the congregation said, Amen. <laughs> Yay, all right. We're getting relieved. And praise the Lord. And the people did according to this promise. Moreover, now, Nehemiah's example. What we're going to look at now to the end of the chapter is, Nehemiah is not there to be rich like these people are, are trying to get rich. Off the misery of the people. Oh, he got no food? Well, we'll make it even harder. When it comes to food, you've got them. They need food to live and they were just making it hard. And making them in debt for the food. Now Nehemiah, about the food and the way his ways were. Moreover, from the time that I was appointed to be their governor in the land of Judah, from the 20th year even unto the 2 and 30th year of Artaxerxes, the king, that is 12 years, I and my brethren have not eaten the bread of the governor. He's not sitting down at a lavish banquet meal while the people are starving. He's eating the same thing the people are eating. How much the government people lavish themselves and then tell you how poor you are and what you know. But the former governors, people before me, this is what they did, that had been before me, were chargeable unto the people. The people had to take care of them. They had taken of the bread and wine, besides 40 shekels of silver. Yea, even their servants bear rule over the people. But so did not I because I feared of the of fear of God. I didn't exhort the money out of them. I didn't take the money from them. And I didn't ask anything from them. The people that were before me made them pay. Made them give. That's what these people are, are with the exacting of the usury. They're making. He said, I fear God. We fear God, God will take care of you. I know that for a fact. Yea, also I continued in the work of this wall. He's working on the wall. We had nobles in chapter 3, yeah, they didn't really put their heart to it. Nehemiah is working on that wall just like the common Jew is working on that wall. But he wasn't named in chapter 3, was he? He was an unnamed man of the workers. Which means in chapter 3, when we had people building this section, people doing this section, Nehemiah was working under the authority of one of those people. Also, I continued the work of the, this wall. 
neither bought me any land. It's not the time. What? I mean, he, he, the trumpet if there was yeah, trouble. when it came to the war time. No, they attacked the wall. Yep. They were to go where the trumpet would be attacked. And Nehemiah was the one that blew the trumpet. It has the authority of, let's go to work. Let's go to battle. But he's a humble man. Neither bought we any land. Well, that should have been a lesson right there to the people in chapter 5. You really didn't need that land yet. Maybe it's a land in, in Babylon. But Nehemiah's like, I ain't got no land yet. I ain't ready for the land. And all my servants, look at that, Nehemiah had servants, were gathered thither unto the work. We're all working together. Moreover, there were at my table 150 of the Jews and rulers, common people, besides those that came unto us from among the heathen that are about us. <laughs> He's even got heathen sitting down eating with them. You want to tell that to Peter? You want to tell that to Jonah? Those would be probably the, the authorities under King Ahasuerus. Remember, he came with the king and queen's honor. Now that we're no, now that which we prepared for me daily was one ox, six choice sheep, also fowls were prepared for me and the men in seventeen. And once in 10 days store of all sorts of wine. So every 10 days, one of them days we had wine. Yet for all this, required not I the bread of the governor. We did not get of the taxes. We did were not chargeable unto the people. We earned what we got. Because the bondage was heavy upon this people. Think, think upon me, my God. God, look upon me. Help me, God. For good. According to all that I have done for this people. And don't ever claim that as a Christian. Because it's not what we have done. Not of works, least any man boast. And this would be the story of George Muller. Just relying on God to take care of him. Relying on God to take care of Nehemiah. But it's the law. They were not the charge usually. Now he didn't say completely forgive the whole debt. But then again the law also prescribed when there came a time of the time of uh, uh, how do you say it? Time of um, jubilee. Then those debts and credits would be wiped off anyway. 